Chapter 61 The Beginning of the End You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ice covered everything as far as the eyes could see, transforming the depressing atmosphere of the dungeon into an enchanting scenery. Yi Ci and a few ranged players were the only ones who survived the wave of frost, while the rest of the party were frozen solid. Their HP dropped rapidly under the effect of frost damage. Those clerics who aren't frozen, hurry up and heal shouted little Dan, who had not expected something like this to happen. The cleric who previously casted a healing spell was already frozen solid. Cherry Blossom was the only healer left among those players who could still move. She was standing not far away from ECI, and she immediately raised her staff and chanted a spell slowly after hearing the order from little Dan. It was the novice mass light healing. Yi Ci was very familiar with the spell. As a veteran human sorceress, she spent most of her time dealing with clerics. She could tell the skill that a cleric was releasing just by looking at the character's action while casting the spell. But what surprised Yi Ci was the fact that Steel, Blooded Battle Spear managed to acquire a skillbook for that healing skill. Novice Mass Light Healing Randomly heals a small amount of health of 8 random teammates within a 20 yards radius of the caster. Casting time. 5 seconds, cooldown. 8 seconds most clerics in the earlier stages of the game do not have any AOE healing spell. A mass healing spell is the deciding factor of a party's survivability and endurance. But it was not the case this time. The problem here was that if Cherry Blossom casted any healing spell, she would be the next to get frozen, along with the players within a 15 yards radius of her position. Cherry, don't heal. Yi Ci immediately tried to stop her. Little Dan exploded angrily, don't tell me you're just going to let them die. Gong Ziyu, where's your team spirit? Don't you know there's a death penalty? Cherry Blossom looked at Yi Ci with doubt in her eyes, and the latter sent her a private message, drink a large health potion later. Cherry Blossom was alarmed. She understood that something bad would happen to her. As she was about to stop the incantation, little Dan roared in anger, Cherry, hurry up and heal them up. Her long-term obedience kicked in and she continued casting the spell. Knowing that it was impossible to stop Cherry Blossom from casting the spell, ECI roughly calculated the distance between Cherry Blossom and herself and darted away. Cherry Blossom let out a surprised yelp just as ECI stopped 15 yards away from her. Just as expected, Cherry Blossom was frozen along with the players around her. Phew, that's peculiar, a lost gasp entered YC's ears. She turned around, and noticed that a rogue had also managed to escape the freeze's area of effect. Yi Ci was slightly surprised. She had not expected someone to have retreated away from the freeze's area of effect. She did it out of her past life's experience. So what caused the rogue to have the same reaction? The rogue grinned at her, He, Gong Ziyu, we meet again. The person was an undead rogue with ashen skin and withered limbs. His sunken eye sockets hid his pitch dot black eyes. The rogue was able to catch up with Yi Ci despite his small build, meaning that he was a full, agility rogue. Yi Ci initially felt that he was somewhat familiar. Looking and realized that he was the only rogue who had not left the party when she led the first squadron to secure the automaton formation first five. The rogue's name was Evil Winds. Yi Ci had not noticed anything out of the ordinary about the rogue, but his performance a few moments ago was a surprise to Yi Ci. She responded with a smile of her own, well met indeed. Evil Winds chuckled and looked at Little Dan. His tone was as if he was telling Little Dan, this has nothing to do with me, as he asked, Little Dan, are you guys going to leave the dungeon, or do you want the both of us to go die as well? Little Dan couldn't help but felt depressed as he glanced at the two surviving players and sighed, we'll leave the dungeon. Help us pick up our equipment. Sure. Y'all can go rest in peace now. Evil Winds let out another chuckle. There was nothing wrong with the sentence itself. But it brought out different feelings for different audiences. For those who were frozen, they almost coughed up blood. 
As for Yi Si, it was as if he was taking joy in the misfortunes of the other party members. But truth to be told, watching silently while the rest of the party slowly got annihilated was something quite wonderful, especially when numbers signifying the loss of their HP floated on their heads constantly. Within 20 seconds, 23 of the party members who were frozen vanished into flashes of white light and left the dungeon. Evil Winds spoke up just at that moment, Gongzi, how are we going to retrieve all o that equipment? Yi Si remained silent. She turned around and looked at Evil Winds, who laughed, I think they must have stepped on some sort of OP trap. But I noticed that you were being very cautious as you moved about. I thought you've had something figured out. It's nothing, I've merely picked a safe path that was already taken by somebody else. Yi Si nodded. The rogue was good. Even if his mechanical skills failed to leave an impression on Yi Si, his perception of the situation was excellent. Evil Winds did not doubt Yi Si's words. He nodded at her and said, I'll go retrieve the equipment. I'll go. Evil Winds smiled and shook his head, you're obviously the better among the both of us. If I die, you can still clean up my mess. However if you fail, I don't think I'd have the ability to pull it off. So I'll go, he stood up and moved towards the closest piece of equipment. Yi Si did not reject his offer, and paid close attention to his movements. Rogues have the highest perception among all of the classes, just like how hunters have the highest balance. A heightened perception allows rogues who were usually soft targets to detect danger and allows them to be more aware of their surroundings. Whenever evil winds took a step forward, he would turn his head around and observe his surrounding carefully. He was using his racial trait, detect danger. Under such circumstances, Evil Winds was able to safely retrieve every single piece of equipment and walk away safely. Before he could sit down and rest, footsteps could be heard in the area. It was the players who had revived themselves and they were led by Thousand Sunsets. After Evil Winds returned the items to his comrades, Little Dan spoke up, Are you the one who retrieved all the items? Evil Winds did not deny it, and little Dan continued after a slight pause, you take point. Lead the way with your racial trait. I want the rest of you to follow him closely. Evil Winds hesitated before nodding in confirmation, all right. The party members replenished themselves, repaired their equipment, casted buffs on themselves, and were ready to move out. Dot Yi Si furrowed her eyebrows. Having evil Winds lead the way did not solve the root of their problems. And it was just the first problem they would face in the Frosty Wasteland. Frosty Wasteland was a very easy dungeon according to fate officials. But were their words right or wrong? There was no definite answer. It depended wholly on the definition of simple and difficult. It it was compared to the dungeons in the later stages of the game, Frosty Wasteland was of course child's play. But at this period of time, the difficulty of the Frosty Wasteland was unprecedented. Fate is a game that stressed heavily on teamwork. This teamwork was not limited to the average player. It also includes the teamwork between the normal players and the life players. And this stage of the dungeon was exactly one that is testing the capability of a life player's culinary skill. There was an invisible monster hidden not far away from the party's position, and its biggest weakness was gluttony. Players must place a dish called Fragrant Seafood at a very specific location to trick the monster into showing itself. Upon appearance, it will cast an AoE spell that will annihilate any players within a 35 yards radius. The skill will activate an old clock tower not far away from the players. Players must position themselves according to the clock hand or risk being frozen. As soon as somebody casted a spell on the player who was frozen, players within a 15 yards radius around the caster will in turn be frozen. When the players reposition themselves, ranged players must focus all of their attacks on the invisible monster. If the damage output did not hit the requirement set by the system within a certain amount of time, the monster will release the same AoE skill when its HP hits 80%, 60%, 40%, and 20%. 
If the party was unable to dish out enough damage, the only thing that awaits them was annihilation. But the monster was only an appetizer. In the face of the dungeon's boss, it was very simple. Evil winds advanced slowly and carefully. He was able to sense a grave, unknown dangerous presence looming ahead, but was unable to find its exact location. Perspiration formed on his forehead. He eventually stopped, and sent a private message to Yi Ci, Gongzi, I can feel a dangerous presence ahead, but I can't locate it. Be careful and pay close attention to your surroundings and see if you can find any hints. Yi Ci of course could not tell him that there was an invisible monster resting not 30 yards away from him. Evil winds listened intently and heard a soft voice. He took a step forward reflectively and heard the system announcement, you have been frozen by the wasteland's ice. A crippling pain crept up his body along his legs, and evil winds felt panic rising in his heart. Here's your Monday chapter. Same old thing, if you want to support Roth on Patreon, here's the link. HTTPS forward slash forward slash www.patreon.com slash jimminks but I, I see four people up subscribing from my Patreon, guess they hate the shameless message and my on point punctuality t underscore underscore t anyways, here's the chapter, Imma go indulge myself in a game of civilization v. Chapter 62 A confusing difficulty you are listening at novelfull.audio. Heal. Little Dan ordered without any hesitation. Yi Ci retreated without any hesitation either. Her movements were rapid as she retreated to a spot which was 15 yards away from the last player with lightning speed. As a party leader, one must be observant and alert. Yi Ci's movements were naturally detected by Little Dan. While he ordered them to cast a healing spell, he asked Yi Ci, Gong Ziyu, why are you retreating? I haven't given you any orders to retreat. Before he could even finish his sentence, members of the party let out blood-curdling screams. They were all frozen after the cleric cast the healing spell. Yi Ci had retreated far enough and was out of the battle. She sat down pleasantly. There was a slight mocking tone in her cheerful voice. There ought to be someone to stay here and help you all pick up your equipment. Little Dan was filled with gloom because the party was going to be annihilated again, and also because Yi Ci was acting as if this was none of her business. Let's hurry back into the dungeon again, he said angrily and didn't say anything else after that. Yi Ci was blinded by the white glow from the death of other players in no time. She squinted her eyes as the corner of her mouth lifted coolly into a faint smile. This is really quite a splendid scenery. By the time the party had once again returned to the dungeon, the equipment they had dropped were all neatly arranged on the floor. Yi Ci was still sitting at the same spot, as if she had never budged. No one spoke. People who had dropped their equipment picked them up from beside Yi Ci before quietly sitting down to recover their HP. To be annihilated two times in a row was quite a blow to their confidence. Even Peacock Blue, who had always been arrogant, was silent right now and seemed to be in low dot spirits. There was an old saying in dungeons. You must be alive to be useful. No matter what class you were, if you wanted to have a high DP, or to tank against monsters, or even have the highest heal value, you must be able to satisfy the first rule, which was also the only bottom line, to survive. One could only be able to display their greatest strength when they were alive. If they were a dead body, even the most awesome player would only be a good.4. Nothing who free loaded on experience points and equipment. Although the steel, blooded battle spear was a new guild, they have managed to clear quite a few dungeons. The reason was naturally understood by everyone who was a member. So right now, no one dared to blame Yi Ci about anything. She had only done the most accurate choice under the worst situation. Little Dan didn't say anything either. He just sat at one corner, silently staring at the ruins that weren't really special ahead of them while he reflected on the problems and the lessons they had gained through these two annihilations. After a while, he turned his head to look at evil winds, evil, did you discover anything just now? I only sensed a great danger ahead of us. There should be an elite monster there. 
but I cano detect it. Have you tried using detection? Not yet. Little Dan nodded and then ordered another elf rogue from the party to follow the route that evil winds had taken just now towards the area ahead of them to cast detection. After just a short while, he heard the rogue scream as he got frozen once again. Little Dan wasn't panicked. He just remained stoic as he quietly ordered another healer to heal him and then quietly observed ECI. When he discovered ECI standing up immediately to retreat a distance after he ordered for a heal, he pretended to retreat by accident too and retreated to almost the same distance as ECI. He then turned to the front again. As soon as the cleric started to chant the healing spell, the ice that had enveloped the rogue quickly traveled towards that cleric and instantly froze her. Not only that, the other few players who were within 15 yards radius from the cleric got frozen again too. So this was how it was. Little Dan had finally figured out the pattern and the things that would trigger the ice to freeze the players as well as its freezing radius. He threw ECI another glance again. Although he was still pissed over the incident when ECI was made the battle commander, he couldn't deny the fact that this huntress's observation skills were extremely formidable when it came to PvE. Dot after greeting a few people who had been resurrected, Little Dan seized the opportunity to talk while everyone was still recovering. After thinking through about it just now, there must be some sort of mechanism in the area ahead and this mechanism is very concealed. If we step on it by accident, we will be frozen. He stopped here and lifted his head to look at the previous spot where the rogue got frozen then confirmed again. Players within a radius of 20 yards from the first person who got frozen will also be frozen. We will basically die once we get frozen. He paused for a moment and looked at everyone. He discovered that they were all attentively listening to his analysis so he subconsciously casted a glance at Yi Si again. But instead, he saw that she was just polishing the bow in her hands with her head lowered and he couldn't see the expression on her face. He let out a sigh again but didn't say anything. Those who are frozen shouldn't be healed. Otherwise the person who is healing them and those who are within a 15 yards radius from that healer will also be frozen. Little Dan's eyebrows were knitted together again as he explained. Not only healing, anyone who attacks with magic spells will also be frozen. He continued uncertainly. Yi Si was only polishing the icy shortbow. She had already embedded a tetra plating on it to slightly raise its attack. With that, it had only barely be able to perform on par. If it wasn't for its additional effect of reducing agility, it was really time for this shortbow to be retired. Yi Si didn't show any emotions in particular towards Little Dan's speculations. Little Dan was a decent leader. If he couldn't even make such deductions on this kind of pattern even after dying consecutively for a few times, then he really couldn't live up to his reputation of being a decent leader. However, just knowing these few things wasn't enough. He needed to figure out how to solve this. As for how to solve this. She wasn't the leader so it was none of her business. Although little Dan had figured out the theory, he still had no idea on how to solve it and had led the party to its consecutive annihilation for another few times. However, he had been consciously following Yi Si's movements, so his death counts were less than the other players. But this situation wasn't any better either. Especially when it came to the special rules of the death penalties in Fate. After level 10, player would drop by one level regardless of how they died outside of dungeon and zero to two of their equipment would be dropped by random. There wouldn't be any penalties for dying under 20 times a day within the dungeon, but the equipment's endurance would be reduced and a few equipments would be dropped by random. These could be fixed by money. However, if the death count went over 20 times in one day within the dungeon, 50% experience points would be deducted. So normally if a player had died 20 times in a dungeon, they would not continue playing anymore. After all, leveling up after level 10 was a very difficult task. Any slight deduction in experience points would be a heartache to anyone, let alone losing 50% experience points every time. This area was indeed a difficult one. If one was going to find a solution without any guides, there wouldn't be any results even after dying 50 times. 
The party had been stuck here for too long, from four o'clock in the afternoon until almost midnight, but they were still not making much progress. The team sat together to discuss among themselves but nothing was really working. Yi Ci was growing drowsy at one side instead. The characters in-game could eat the food in-game to allay their hunger without eating for so many hours and without any nutrient fluids provided, Yi Ci was about to pass out from her hunger. To make the situation worse, Remote Depths was dropping her a private message of Dish's names every hour, which drove her even crazier. How many times can everyone still die? The dungeon's death count reset every morning at 7 o'clock. Little Dan looked at the time and it was already 1 o'clock in the morning. Six times. Eight times. Seven times. Dot. After going around, the lowest count was only three times. The most was of course, Yi Ci. She didn't die even once. Little Dan frowned as he listened to the death counts. This really didn't look good. All of a sudden, Thousand Sunset spoke up. Little Dan, why not let Gongzi you lead? Little Dan was a bit shocked and immediately turned around to look at him. He then looked at Gongzi Yu who was leaning against the wall drowsily before shifting his gaze back to Thousand Sunsets again and shook his head. Thousand Sunsets, you should believe in me, he insisted. Thousand Sunsets opened his mouth, as if about to say something again, but little Dan was still shaking his head insistently. She's never been here before, too. You have to believe in me in this kind of situation. In the end, his insistence was still compromised by Thousand Sunsets. Thousand Sunsets nodded his head and gave little Dan a pat on his shoulder. The person with the highest death count only has three more chances. You better make the most of it. If things still don't work out, think about it after you go offline. You will still be leading tomorrow. If we still can't clear this tomorrow, I'll have to switch the leader. Little Dan took a deep breath as he gathered the party once again. The outcome wasn't really of any difference. After the whole night's confusion, they were only certain that there was a powerful elite monster at a place no one could see, and this monster was groaning about being hungry in a very soft voice. Other than that, they basically ended up empty handed. Yi Ci crawled out of the gaming cabin, about to be starved to death. She dashed into the kitchen. Baimo had left some food for here there, but she couldn't be bothered to heat it up in the microwave and shoved it right into her mouth. Everyone had something they couldn't tolerate and for Yi Ci, hunger was something she couldn't tolerate the most. Skipping one meal was her highest limit. If she were to skip two meals, she was pretty sure someone would have to come collect her corpse. Yi Ci went online early the next day. She had initially planned to buy some stuff off the auction before heading to the dungeon. However she had received a last-minute notice that the meeting of the leaders of the 1st and 2nd Squadron would hold a meeting to discuss the strategy of clearing the dungeon, and their operation to start clearing the dungeon was delayed to 6 p.m. on the same day. But it was only 8 in the morning right now. If they were going to change the time, they should have informed earlier. At the very least she could have slept in. While she was fuming, she heard a system notification. Chapter 63 Second Rally You are listening at NovelFull.audio The player Flawless Reflection would like to add you as a friend. Chin Churuo Yi Ci was momentarily stunned. Senior Chin was a person with his own principles. He must have decided to contact Yi Ci personally instead of troubling Fang Shu Shu as the middleman. She accepted the friend request. Chin Churuo immediately contacted Yi Ci. After giving Yi Ci a conventional greeting, he stated his intention for contacting her, Gong Ziyu, were stuck before we could even reach the first boss. Our rogues figured out that there was an elite monster hidden somewhere, but we just couldn't find it. I thought it was a BUG, but the officials claimed that there was nothing wrong with it. Do you have any ways of getting past that guy? World Conqueror's progress was hindered by the same problem faced by Steel, Blooded Battle Spear. Yi Ci gave thought about the matter for a moment, and then decided to not share any info with Qin Churuo. 
she had always been a responsible person. Since she was still part of Steel, Blooded Battle Spear, and have not helped the guild to clear the dungeon yet, she would never share any information with somebody else. We're stuck at the same place as well. Yi Si managed to dodge Chin Churuo's question skillfully. She avoided the topic of her knowledge of a possible solution to the problem, and instead directed her words towards Steel, Blooded Battle Spear's progress. Thinking that Yi Si had no solution for getting past the elite monster either, Chin Churuo let out a sigh. This dungeon is so hard. I thought that as a leader of a party, you'd know a thing or two. Yi Si laughed, I'm not the one in charge. What? Flawless reflection was shocked, I've heard rumors that you'll be leading Steel, Blooded Battle Spear's progress in exploring the frosty wastelands. That was why all the other guilds were so desperate to clear the dungeon. They're afraid that you guys will get the first blood. Why are you not the one in charge? Yi Si was momentarily stunned. She had no knowledge about the rumor. She had unintentionally let a vital piece of information slip. Unable to come out with an excuse to cover it up, Yi Si said, we're taking turns to command the party. Flawless reflection suspicion was not aroused. After all, every guild has multiple commanders, and each of them needed time to familiarize themselves with the dungeon. Since you're not the current commander, how about helping us out? I will fully compensate you. Flawless reflection immediately had the thought of enticing Yi Si. Yi Si, however, declined the offer, and flawless reflection decided to let that matter go. He instead asked for Yi Si to share information with him if her guild managed to make any progress. While the two was busy chatting, another conversation was taking place. Dong Yin who was unable to find Yi Si during the meeting of the first and second squadron sent Thousand Sunsets a private message, Thousand, why is little Si not here? Oh, this is a meeting for core members, she was not informed. Replied Thousand Sunsets. Isn't she one of the commanders? She was not the one in charge yesterday, she wouldn't know anything. So it's meaningless to call her over anyways. Besides, she's famous, I don't want to waste too much of her time. Said Thousand Sunsets to Dong Yin with a dull tone. B. Dot, but she obtained so many first bloods, maybe she's experienced in this kind of stuff. Don't we need more ideas and opinions to solve this dungeon? Besides, she's so skillful. Thousand Sunset's anger began to rise. He knew that Gong Ziyu was very capable, and had tried his best to buy her loyalty. But he came to realize that Gong Ziyu's thoughts were not as simple as those that a normal 18-year-old would have. She was not as easy to manipulate as Dong Yin and Yi Tsung. That was why Thousand Sunsets began to harbor some hostility towards Yi Si. A capable person who couldn't be controlled was of course less favorable than his brothers that were like his own arms. His lack of restriction towards Yi Si earlier on, followed by appointing her as battle commander and granting her access to the guild warehouse were his attempts to buy her loyalty. Thousand Sunsets had never expected Yi Si to be so unenthusiastic towards Steel, Blooded Battle Spear. That was the main source of his anger. Yi Si's behavior of passiveness after being provoked by Little Dan had also provoked Thousand Sunsets anger. Must she throw a fit after being reprimanded by the commander? Although she was probably right in that matter, would it hurt to just let it go? Can't she give some constructive suggestions about clearing the dungeon? Was she a princess or something? Thousand Sunsets cut Dong Yin off before she could say more, I granted her access to the guild warehouse exactly because she's skillful. I even made her the guild's battle commander. But what has she done for the guild? She didn't even show up during our battle with Tang Dynasty. Little Dan and Crimson deserved the position more than her, but I gave her that position anyways. But how did she repay me? It's just a few first bloods, does that give her the right to be so high and mighty? She doesn't even give a shit about the guild's regulations. I have never doubted her capabilities, but someone must also have a good personality. One must not forget the guild even when one becomes famous. Eneen, let me tell you something, stay away from people like this. 
she's selfish and cold. She might sell you out someday. Dong Yin was also angry after listening to Thousand Sunset's words, we've known each other for more than ten years. I know her very well. She's just awkward when it comes to social interaction. She's a good person. Thousand Sunsets creased his eyebrows. He did not want to argue with Dong Yin. A little girl like her was always overly naive and stubborn. It was very hard to change her views once she made up her mind. He started his relationship with Dong Yin because she was a childhood friend of Yi Si. He had hoped to gain useful information from Yi Si through Dong Yin. But Yi Si had never shared any guides and tips with her. This gave him an impression that Gong Ziyu was someone who would disregard even her best friends. He sneered at Dong Yin, if she's such a good person, why don't she tell you anything about the armored giant tortoise when asked? Dong Yin was made speechless. She stared at the sneer showing on Thousand Sunsets' face. Was this the Thousand Sunsets who had always treated her very very well? Was this the Thousand Sunsets that wouldn't even use any harsh words on her? Deep down, Dong Yin knew that Thousand Sunsets accepted her because of her relationship with Yi Si. But she had always tried to convince herself that it was not the truth. She was deeply shocked by Thousand Sunsets' sudden words. She suddenly remembered something Yi Si had said to her. It doesn't matter if he's a good person. The most important thing is. Does he treat you well? Noticing Dong Yin's silence, Thousand Sunset softened his tone, Yin Yin, you're different from people like Yi Si. You're pure and sincere, while she's cunning and calculative. I'm afraid that you'll get hurt by her. That sort of person would never be accepted into a guild if not for us taking her in. She has absolutely no team spirit. Dong Yin stood up, slapped away Thousand Sunset's hand that was resting on her shoulders, and left the conference room. This attracted the attention of the others who were present. Thousand Sunsets merely waved his hand, she's just throwing a tantrum, don't mind her. Dong Yin sought out Lu Chang after leaving the conference room. She had intended to tell Lu Chang the whole story, but in the end kept it to herself. Not able to leave Red Lake City, as her guild would resume exploring Frosty Wasteland later that day, Yi Si had nothing to do but loiter around the city while clearing her daily quests. Through her efforts, her military rank had risen from first rank soldier to second rank soldier. After completing her daily quests, Yi Si hunted for beasts nearby the city and collected their meat to level up her cooking skills. OL 3's appetite increased along with his level. He was no longer satisfied with normal food. This was why Yi Si was forced to learn some cooking skills. At 5 p.m. that evening, Yi Si went offline with Bai Mo to eat dinner before going back online. She went online just in time to gather with the party at 6 p.m. The entry limit for a 25.man dungeon was once a day. If one wished to store their progress, they'd need to pay certain amount of gold coins according to the dungeon's difficulty to a specific NPC. There was, however, no need for the party to record their progress, as they had not even met the first boss. They started all over again, but the atmosphere was gloomy, and even Peacock Blue was overly quiet. When they reached the place where their progress was halted, Little Dan immediately ordered a rogue to remove all his equipment before he placed some food at a very specific spot. Little Dan and company were quite smart. They were able to figure out the key to lure out the invisible monster within a day. But with nearly 200 different kinds of food, it would take a long time for them to figure out the right one. Yi Si sighed as she watched the rogue. If the food placed by the invisible monster was not the one it liked, the person who placed the food would be killed instantly. Yi Si could still remember the countless lives lost when players tried offering different sorts of food to lure the monster out. It could be said that the path to clearing the dungeon was paved by the corpses of countless players. Chapter 64 Dispute for Commander's Position You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. When the rogue retreated to a distance about 10 yards away from the food, an angry voice rang out, Shameless fools, do you think this will make me happy? I'll punish your insolence. 
The voice was not loud, but it echoed around the enclosed space, causing headaches to the players. Their hit points even dropped a little. The rogue who placed the food wasn't as lucky. He was turned into a giant popsicle and died instantly. The rogue didn't drop any equipment, as he had removed everything before placing the food. He revived himself and continued to try different types of food. He tried ten times, and was killed each time without finding the correct type of food. After his tenth attempt, he looked at little Dan and shook his head, Brother Dan, I have no food left. Little Dan nodded and said to Evil Winds, who had also removed all his equipment, Evil, it's your turn. It didn't take long for Evil Winds to die for ten times as well. He also indicated that he ran out of food. Little Dan sighed, seems like these twenty foods are no good. He then turned towards Thousand Sunsets, I'll ask Crimson if they made any progress. Judging from Little Dan's facial expression after contacting Crimson Millions, they had failed as well. Forget about it, we'll try again tomorrow. We've exhausted all the food we brought. Thousand Sunsets was annoyed. He stood up and was about to leave the dungeon. Yi Ci wrinkled her eyebrows. They were going to try again tomorrow. How long would it take with such trial and error method? Yi Ci let out a breath. She no longer cared if she was not the person in charge. They were ultimately wasting her time as well. She would rather spend her time doing something else. She stood up and spoke softly, let me try. Thousand Sunsets was momentarily stunned. He had not expected Yi Ci to act. He was also curious at the same time. Had this huntress figured out the problem that they'd spent a whole day trying to crack? He the asked, you've prepared some food. It dropped from a monster. Yi Ci replied with a random answer, and it cleared any suspicions that Thousand Sunsets had. He pursed his lips. It appeared to him that Yi Ci was only good in solving the smaller dungeons that were not so difficult, and she was less experienced than Little Dan when it came to the larger dungeons. After all, she was an 18-year-old girl. Little Dan had been staring at Yi Ci ever since she spoke. He watched as she moved with careful steps towards a position entirely different from where the previous two rogues had placed their food, Gong Ziyu, your position is wrong. You can't do it from there. Wrong position. Can't do it from there. Yi Si's lips almost twitched. She had placed the fragrant seafood countless times in her last life, and now somebody was telling her that her position was wrong. I'm just trying it out. Little Dan was a little unhappy after hearing Yi Si's answer. He did not remind her to unequip her gear, and was even looking forward to watching her die and drop her equipment. Despite doing the same thing, the vast difference between their skills was obvious. A hunter's perception was lower than that of a rogue's, and they do not have the detection skill. Despite that, Yi Si's steps were light as feather, and she was able to reach the spot in no time. After quickly placing the food, Yi Si bent her knees and leapt onto a rock. Using it as a springboard, she leapt gracefully into the air and landed amidst the party members. She completed the action within seconds, and her grace attracted countless pairs of eyes. Just as she landed, a hoarse voice sounded, Mortals are always the most pretentious. Do you think I'll let you live just because you brought my favorite food? No. You mortals only deserve the embrace of death. Yi Ci immediately shouted, Back off now, as far as you can. She chose not to include the safe distance of 35 yards to avoid the attack, as it would be very hard to explain herself later on. Most of the players in the first squadron had the experience of being under Yi Si's command and were able to react immediately. Little Dan was surprised that Yi Si had survived after placing the food, but he was also annoyed when Yi Si immediately instructed the party to back off right after landing in their midst. Who's the one in command here? Little Dan's anger increased when he realized that most of the players have reacted to Yi Si's instruction. He spoke loudly, you guys, hurry up and back off, listen to my commands. Yi Ci had warned the players out of reflex, and had not put much thought in it. 
she was momentarily stunned by little Dan's words. That it was like a slap to her face. Somebody patted her shoulder. It was Thousand Sunsets. He smiled at Yi Si, don't mind him, he was supposed to be the one in charge, after all. Yi Si twitched her lips. Little Dan's reaction was totally unnecessary. She did not have the intention to steal all the glory. It was very ungraceful for a such a big guild to act so stingy over something so trivial. Yi Si's anger was ignited. She made the decision to never intervene no matter how high the casualty of the first squadron was. The party retreated 35 yards away from the invisible monster, the Wasteland Lurker, and dodged its ultimate thanks to Yi Si's warning. But another challenge immediately arose. As the Wasteland Lurker devoured the fragrant seafood, a layer of frost seeped up from underneath a slanting clock tower not far away. The layer of frost spread towards the crowd with a slow but steady speed. If players in the dungeon did not position themselves according to the clock hand, they would be frozen. There were also skills that could counter the frost, such as a cleric's expel frost, a warlock's resist and a hunter's feign death. Unfortunately, expel frost and resist had very low drop rates, and players from steel, blooded battle spear were not outfitted with such skills. However, this was none of Yi Si's concern. She would not be harmed by the creeping layer of frost as she had learned feigned death. She activated feigned death the moment the layer of frost touched the sole of her feet. Immune. As expected, the entire party was annihilated, with the exception of Yi Si. The frost would disappear after all the frozen players in the dungeon were dead. Cuck. Not again. Some of the male players began to curse under their breath, but they did not dare to raise their voices. The game promoted civility. If the players cursed with vulgarities recognized by the system, they would be struck by lightning, or even have their stats reduced at random. That was why the players did not even dare to curse loudly despite their anger. Yi Si rose up from the ground after the party disappeared into flashes of white light and the frost disappeared. She then waited silently for the party to revive themselves. The Wasteland Lurker turned back towards the clock tower and disappeared after the system registered that all the players were dead, Yi Si had cast feigned death, and was counted as being dead. The members of the party re-entered the dungeon moments later, and Little Dan asked, Gong Ziyu, where is the Wasteland Lurker? It exited combat. Little Dan clenched his fists. They'd found a solution to draw out the Wasteland Lurker, but why would something like that happen? Wasn't the dungeon supposed to be simple? The death of the party was not in vain. They had managed to discover the Wasteland Lurker's favorite food. Little Dan immediately passed the information on to Crimson Millions, while the guild's life players began their preparation. If the fragrant seafood was not one of the dishes that could be learned from a life instructor NPC, Yi Si would be able to make a huge profit out of it. The preparations were finished at around 10 p.m. Although they tried countless times to deploy the fragrant seafood just like how Yi Si did, the party was still annihilated time after time, to the point where several members of the party had died 20 times. Little Dan could only call off the exploration temporarily. Noticing that the commander for the next day was not announced, Yi Si couldn't help but ask aloud, who will be in command tomorrow? Little Dan shared a look with Thousand Sunsets. Remembering Thousand Sunsets' words the day before, he remained silent. Zero Arsenic knew of the deal between Little Dan and Thousand Sunsets. But before he could confirm with him that Yi Si would be in charge, Thousand Sunsets spoke up, we're still exploring this dungeon. Since Little Dan and Crimson Millions have been leading the party for these last few days, I think it'll be best to keep them in command. You'll be placed in command of the next 25.man dungeon. Yi Si furrowed her eyebrows. She had been waiting patiently just because she wanted a disrupting shot skill book dropped from this dungeon. But with Thousand Sunset's sudden decision, her patience was at its limit. Disrupting shot was a hunter's only way of interrupting a boss skill in the early stages of the game, and it would only be dropped in the frosty wasteland. 
Aside from the 100% drop rate in the event of a first blood, the drop rate of the skill book was very low. The decision to not place her in command meant that her rights to have priority on the skill book was taken away. If that was the case, Yi Ci had no more reason to continue wasting time with the bunch. Yi Ci nodded, all right, then I won't be coming tomorrow. Yi Ci's words were like a pebble cast into a pond, the ripples spreading long after she finished speaking. The party members showed different reactions. Some were astonished, some remained calm, while there were others who were whispering amongst themselves. Thousand Sunsets was momentarily taken aback, he then said with a smile that did not reach his eyes, Gong Ziyu, this is a guild activity. It's not good for you to just go absent like that, right? Yi Ci raised her eyebrows. She was not asking for their permission. She was simply informing them about her decision. N. Finally. Little Blue, would you tell her what is the fourth rule under the guild activity regulations? Noticing Yi Si's expression, Thousand Sunsets gave his instruction to Peacock Blue who was standing behind him. Hi peeps. I'm bored, so I posted released the double chapters earlier. He he xd anyways, I hope you guys enjoy the chapter. Aia wand, if you wanna give Jimmy some freebies and make him happy, click here. After all, Uncle Ben did say, with great power comes great responsibility, and with great motivation comes great translation speed xd. Chapter 65 Upwards Ho. You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Peacock Blue pursed her lips and then cleared her throat. She said in a clear and slow voice, those who are inactive in taking part in guild activities or those who choose to not take part in guild activities without reason will have 50% of their current DKP deducted. Such rule were part of every guild, but the punishments could vary. It was usually just for show and rarely applied. But at this time, Thousand Sunsets decided to use that particular rule to pressure Yi Ci. The punishment was quite heavy, which was the reason why attendance in steel, blooded battle spear was high. It was all for the money. Thousand, Zero Arsenic tried to stop Thousand Sunsets. He then smiled at Yi Ci. But it was a smile filled with awkwardness, Gongzi, do you have problems in real life tomorrow? You don't have to stop me, Zero. Thousand Sunsets ignored Zero Arsenic's effort to salvage the situation. Yi Si's refusal to reveal info about the armored giant tortoise was already like a thorn in his hide. He was even more irritated when Yi Si went missing during the fight between their guild and Tang dynasty. Her announcement of her absence for the next day was the last straw. He wanted to teach this insufferably arrogant huntress to know that even if a small pot looked puny, it could not be crushed easily. He wanted to show her that one does not simply disrespect steel, blooded battle axe, and one does not simply walk away from thousand sunsets. This is a guild activity. Why are you not taking part? Just because you're not appointed as the commander. Gong Ziyu, this is a guild, not your home. This is not a place for you to throw tantrums. You're famous, yes. But don't forget, you must also have a good character. As a former drill instructor, Thousand Sunsets was very good when it came to giving out life lessons. Many in the guild have had enough with your attitude. If it wasn't for me, do you think you'd still be able to stay in this guild? Thousand, enough. Zero Arsenic was unsettled by Yi Si's calm expression. He tried to stop Thousand Sunsets from continuing his rant. He then smiled at Yi Si, Gongzi, if you have something urgent, you can go offline first. Zero, don't be a pussy. You've always said that she was a great player. From what I see, she's just slightly better when it comes to PvE. So what? Can she be so famous without the backing of a guild? Thousand Sunsets was not as tactful as Zero Arsenic. But his thoughts were not wrong. In fate, one must always need a the help of a team. One could not achieve anything alone. But, Yi Ci was no ordinary person. Yi Ci stared at thousand sunsets and offered him a cold smile. As expected, 
people who can't see eye to eye must walk separate ways. Since you've already put it that way, then farewell. Ye see I left the guild without hesitation. She could not be bothered to talk back to thousand sunsets. His character would get him nowhere in fate. Narrow-minded, short-sighted, and pretentious. Ye see I was someone who would repay someone who did her wrong. She smiled as she took a glance at thousand sunsets. Had he mistaken her for a pushover just because she remained silent? Gomzi, zero arsenic's facial expression, along with the rest of the guild members' expressions had changed the moment she left the guild, what the hell had happened? Zero arsenic desperately tried to stop Yi Ci from leaving, Gomzi, Thousand has always been frank and outspoken. Perhaps it's just a misunderstanding. Don't think too much about it, please. Thousand Sunset's anger was at its peak the moment Yi Ci left the guild. Zero Arsenic's action made it worse. He roared at Zero Arsenic, Zero, she's just a huntress. What do I care if she leaves? System. Gomzi Yu has left the guild steel, blooded battle spear. A system message appeared every time a guild member joined or left the guild. There were countless guild membership related messages in the world channel every day. However, none of them were as shocking as the one that had just appeared. The world channel immediately erupted into chaos. People started to guess the reason behind YC's sudden decision to leave Steel, Blooded Battle Spear. Players began to gossip and several different theories surfaced. There were even some who claimed that they have insider's information. YC's private message channel rang non-stop. Some of them were from her friends who were curious about the situation, while most of them were guild invitations. The system notification never stopped ringing in her ears. System. Good OL Days has invited you to join the guild blank space. System. Flawless Reflection has invited you to join the guild world conqueror. System. Corrupting the Living has invited you to join the guild street assistance. System. Dane has invited you to join the Guild Blade of Abyss. System. Night and Day has invited you to join the Guild Tang Dynasty. System. Sir Diddy has invited you to join the Guild Wolf Pack. What were they doing? Even Tang Dynasty joined in the fun. Even a guild from overseas sent her a guild invitation. There was even an invitation from the Eastern Continent's number one guild, Wolf Pack. Why didn't she herself know that she was so popular? Yi Si's chat channels were not the only one bustling with activity. The world channel was flooded with messages from guilds from the entire eastern continent. They were trying to recruit Yi Si into their guild. Those who were capable offered lots of benefits, while those who were not were trying to entice her with the power of friendship. Thousand Sunsets had also noticed the world channel. His expression soured. Zero Arsenic was still trying his best to persuade Yi Ci into staying, but she merely laughed, I hope that steel, blooded battle spear will grow stronger. And then she left the dungeon. If you don't, I won't have as much satisfaction when I destroy you guys later. As she left, she declined all the guild invitations, and sent a private message to Flawless Reflection. Before he could speak up, Yi Ci had already spoken, Frosty Wastelands, Tomorrow at 1,300 hours, I'll have dibs on all the hunter items. 30,000 gold coins. I'm not responsible for clearing the common mobs, that it was not an inquiry, but a statement. Flawless reflection paused momentarily and immediately gave up on persuading Yi Ci into joining his guild. He laughed. What arrogance. But it was an arrogance that he admired. Only people who were capable had the right to be arrogant. Only a true expert had what it takes to be arrogant. You're helping us to get first blood. Of course. As far as I know, Wolf Pack and Tang Dynasty have solved the difficult part of the dungeon right before the first boss. They'll be challenging the first boss tomorrow. Are you sure you can do it? It depends on the standards of your party as well. If they're all noobs, even I can't do anything. World Conqueror was the twelfth guild in the entire nation. 
It had quite a long history, and its elites were all expert players. Flawless Reflection was not angry at Yi Si's words. Instead, he laughed. What if we can't get the first blood? I'll pay you 50,000 gold coins. How bold. Flawless Reflection was deeply impressed. Even though the game coin and real-world cash conversion system was already in place, Glory Corporation was controlling the flow of gold coins in the game strictly, in fear that the game's financial system would be destroyed. Even a guild like World Conqueror had only a circulating fund of 100,000 gold coins, and Yi Ci was willing to pay 50,000 gold coins in an event where she failed. Do you want to sign a contract? Come to Red Lake City. Half an hour later, Flawless Reflection and Yi Ci left the Red Lake City Administration Hall with an added electronic contract in their inventory. What do you need us to prepare? Flawless Reflection grinned at Yi Ci. He had been trying to woo Gongzi Yu into joining World Conqueror. But when he had a chance, Yi Ci declined his invitation. He promised himself that he would try his best to get Gongzi Yu to join World Conqueror. Each party member must have at least 8 cold resistance potions and freeze resistance potions, 5 dungeon random teleport scroll and 3 fragrant seafood. Yi Ci continued after a pause, all your tanks must have more than 300 defense, and the magical damage of your mage class players must be higher than 180 while the other ranged players must have at least 200 physical damage. You must bring along at least one rogue that has more than 5 movement speed and a druid with more than 3 movement speed. Said druid must also have already learned enraged bear form. Flawless reflection clicked his tongue at Yi Si's request, that's a rather high requirement to meet. Why? You can't make it. Yi Si quirked her lips. Nope, it's not a problem. Despite Yi Si's high requirement, World Conqueror was quite capable, I'll see you at the entrance of the dungeon tomorrow then. Sure. Without any more words, the two parted ways. Yi Ci was shocked the moment she opened the lid of her gaming cabin. Baimo was squatting right beside her, staring at her, his dull expression an indication that he was daydreaming. Yi Ci's could almost feel her heart in her mouth. She took in a deep breath and roared, Baimo, what the f asterisk ck are you doing? Baimo ignored her, and scooped her out of the gaming cabin, you left your guild. Yes, replied Yi Ci with a yawn. Why? I'm not happy with it. Baimo stared at Yi Ci for a brief moment without saying a word. He then messed up her hair and said, I've bought supper. If you're not afraid of getting fat, it's yours. And then he left. Yi Ci smiled at Baimo. She the ate the supper and went to bed. Yi Ci immediately logged into the game after coming home and taking a shower, having finishing lunch at school. Flawless Reflection immediately sent Yi Ci a party invitation. The moment she joined the party, he transferred the party's leadership to Yi Ci. I'll be there shortly. Yi Ci immediately headed to Frosty Wasteland. Before she even left Red Lake City, she received a guild invitation. System. Remote Depths has invited you to join the guild Upward Ho. Upward Ho. What kind of guild was that? But since it was an invitation from Baimo, she was curious. This is my very own guild. Join up, I, your brother, am the guild leader. With the protection of the guild leader, you can do anything you want. Remote Depths laughed. Jay threatened to go on a strike if I don't release this chapter early T underscore underscore T so I had to. Anyways. Enjoy the chapter. And uh, if you wanna drop in a few free bucks for Jimmy, the following is the link. HTTPS forward slash forward slash www.patreon.com slash jimminks. Chapter 66 Nightmare Difficulty You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Yi Ci was momentarily stunned. She would have stood there for a long time if not for remote depths pulling her back to reality. She laughed along with Baimo and accepted the guild invitation. A system notification immediately declared to the world that she had joined a guild. 
system. Gong Ziyu has joined the guild upward ho. The entire world channel went crazy once again. The memory of the big and powerful guilds of the eastern continent trying to recruit Gong Ziyu was still vivid in everybody's minds. There were even bets going on in the eastern continent forums about what guild she would join. It was a shocker to everyone. What kind of guild is Upward Ho? Who the hell were they? Why would Gong Ziyu join them? Gossip immediately surfaced in the world channel. Yi Ci had the foresight of muting all her chat channels before calling up the guild interface. It was a very clean guild. There were only two names in the member list. Leader. Remote Depths. Member. Gong Ziyu. Remote Depths promoted Yi Ci to the vice leader and laughed at her, you're now the vice leader, you can now bully the common people. Yi Ci was puzzled as she stared at the blank members list, bullying the common people. Are you referring to yourself? This of course, faced strong objections from remote depths, and greatly improved Yi Si's mood. She turned off the guild interface and headed for the frosty wasteland. The elites of World Conqueror had already gathered at the entrance of Frosty Wasteland. Flawless Reflection immediately stood up upon seeing Yi Si, and introduced her to the rest of the party. He then asked with a smile, what kind of guild is Upward Ho? What drove you to join that guild? Yi Si chuckled, my cousin created it. Flawless Reflection had not given up yet, then you can all just join my guild. The benefits are negotiable. Sorry, my aspiration is not in the guild. Yi Si shook her head, clearly declining his offer. Flawless reflection was a sensible person. He immediately kept quiet and steered the topic to another direction. After each of the party members were introduced to her, Yi Si nodded and asked, What is the highest defense value of your tanks? 382 The MT, Dragon Witch reported his defense value. As expected of a tank from one of the best guilds in the nation. How high is your block chance? 21%. Before the existence of something as overpowered as the sword back hold, a 21% chance of blocking was already decent for a LVL-20 tank, even if it was not as high as what Yi Ci had expected. Even the fourth tank had a defense value of 345 and a block rate of 19.7%. I'm going to activate the dungeon. Yi Ci said to the rest of the party. There were five dungeon difficulties in Fate. Normal, Hard, Expert, Inferno and Nightmare. A regular 5.man dungeon had only three difficulties. Normal, Hard and Expert, while Inferno and Nightmare difficulties were only available to 25.man or larger dungeons. The difficulty system of a 5.man dungeon was very different from a 25.man man dungeon. One must complete all the difficulties in ascending order while clearing a 5.man dungeon, while in a large dungeon, the choice of difficulty was not limited. Gong Ziyu, are you sure you want to activate the 25.man dungeon, Frosty Wasteland? Yes. Please select the difficulty for your party. Without the slightest hesitation, Yi Ci selected the hardest difficulty, which was Nightmare. She was never a quiet person. Her veins were pumped full of adventurous spirit. It's either go big or go home. To her, merely clearing the dungeon at the normal difficulty was no challenge at all. A notification chimed in the party's channel, World Conqueror has activated the 25.man dungeon Frosty Wasteland, difficulty. Nightmare. This is the beginning of a new nightmare. The dangers within the dungeon are beyond your imagination. Come forth, heroes, write a new epic in the history of the Delayer continent. The notification was exclusive to the Inferno and Nightmare difficulties. It also came with a buff that lasted for the entire duration when players were in the dungeon. A reddish dot gold glow emanated from the bodies of the party members and the received a buff named Blessing of Delayer. Increases all stats by 15 points. Despite having such a good buff, challenging the Nightmare Difficulty Dungeon was still a terrifying experience. Good lord, she selected the Nightmare Difficulty. 
they'd not even passed the first boss of the normal difficulty yet. To challenge nightmare difficulty. Flawless reflection was shocked. He walked up to Yi Si's side and asked worriedly, Gongzi, did you choose the wrong difficulty? This is the nightmare difficulty. Nope. Yi Si turned around and grinned at flawless reflection, why? Do the members of World Conqueror not believe in themselves? This is not a matter of confidence. Flawless reflection sighed, do you want to try the normal difficulty first instead? Yi Si shook her head, I'll only do nightmare and nothing else. If you think that we can't make it, consider our contract voided. Her voice was not loud, but the other party members heard her clearly. The party was silent. They stared at the huntress. She was calm, and she was serious. Her calmness impressed even the veterans of the guild. Although they did not have full confidence in Yi Si, the members of the party had reached the same conclusion in their hearts. Let's do this. Flawless, we're the world conqueror. We must trust in our strength. Shouted a rogue. His cry was echoed by countless others, and the morale of the party soared. Flawless reflection was also infected by their eagerness. He nodded his head at Yi Si and smiled, okay then. I'll leave this to you. Commander, our lives are in your hands. Yi Si kept quiet and turned towards the dungeon entrance. She then waved her hands, let's move out. The nightmare difficulty was on an entirely different level from the normal difficulty dungeon. Even the mobs at the beginning of the dungeon were very tough. But they were nothing in the face of World Conqueror's firepower. They were able to reach the difficult spot in no time, and Yi Si began to explain the strategy of clearing the hidden monster. The moment I start engaging the monster, you guys must make sure that you're at least 15 yards away from me. When the Wasteland Lurker appears, reposition yourselves on my command and focus your attacks on the monster. You don't have to worry about OT, just hit it with all you got. We must kill it within the shortest time possible. Remember, we must deal at least 20% of its health within a minute or we'll get annihilated. So I want all the ranged players to time your attacks properly, and take note of your mana consumption. It was not a simple request. It called for excellent timing and tempo of releasing skills. The players must make sure that their attacks were continuous while simultaneously controlling their mana consumption. It could not be achieved by normal players. But, the players present were all the best of the best, the elites of World Conqueror. What about the melee classes? Asked Flawless Reflection. All they need to do is to move around like the rest of the ranged players and make sure that they don't die. By the way, clerics are not required to heal, all you guys need to do is to attack the monster like the rest of the ranged players. The players looked at each other in confusion. They had never heard of a dungeon where healing was not required. Dot but since Flawless Reflection had passed the command on to Yi Si, they followed her orders without voicing out their suspicions. When the battle started, Yi Si was able to deploy the fragrant seafood and return to the party safely. Her speed and the height of her leap deeply impressed the players present. Flawless Reflection was especially in awe. He was a hunter himself, and he paid extra attention to Yi Si's actions. After all, Almost all experts went through the process of imitation, learning, and finally surpassing their predecessor. The moment the Wasteland Lurker let out a mighty roar, Yi Si stared intently at the slanting clock tower. The moment its only clock hand moved, Yi Si immediately shouted out, move to the 7 o'clock position. The members of the party were in the state of constant alertness, feels like my wording is cancerous. The moment Yi Si shouted out to them, the party moved as one towards the 7 o'clock direction. Stop. Start attacking. The 25 members of the party were able to act as one, meeting Yi Si's expectation of the elites from a top guild. Flawless reflection noticed that Yi Si had not lifted a finger in the entire process, even when the situation is in dire need of every ounce of damage output. It was not because Yi Si was lazy. 
she wanted to determine the firepower of the ranged players of the party when they concentrated their attacks on the same target. The result satisfied Yi Ci. Despite not receiving aid from Yi Ci, the ranged players of World Conqueror were able to defeat the Wasteland Lurker within the given time. A hint rang out in the dungeon the moment the Wasteland Lurker fell. The road forward is no longer cold. Go, loot the corpse. Yi Ci smiled at Flawless Reflection. Ah. Flawless Reflection could not believe his eyes. They'd managed to defeat the Wasteland Lurker just like that. It was the reality. They were able to conquer something that had taken countless lives. And it was at nightmare difficulty. Cheers erupted from the World Conqueror players after a few seconds of pause. They were deeply impressed by Yi Ci. Flawless Reflection was able to obtain a LVL-18 Warlock equipment from the loot. They pressed on forward, and ran into a group of elementals. There were at least 18 of them, and each of them had 20,000 hit points. In a 5.man dungeon of the same level, that was equal to the hit points of a small boss. Have any of your hunters learned feigned death? So here's a new chapters for y'all. With yet another cliff and uh. If you like the chapter and think that Jimmy deserves it, donate to Roth. Donate button at right side of page, if you really want to give Jimmy some free monies, you can also support Jimmy on Patreon at the following link. HTTPS forward slash forward slash www.patreon.com slash jimminks and uh. If you're free, do go to novel updates and put in a few good words for Roth and give us some stars eh. Novel updates link for Roth. HTTP forward slash forward slash www.noveluptates.com slash series slash rain dot of dot the dot hunters slash. Chapter 67 The Dungeon, Part 1 you are listening at novelfull.audio. Ye CI, I the elementals. Flawless reflection and another hunter called an apple a day nodded, yes. Go and attract the aggro of those mobs. If you can't handle them, activate feigned death. Ordered ye CI. She then began to instruct the rest of the party to begin preparations for battle and headed towards the elementals alone. After Yi Ci left, an Apple A Day whispered to Flawless Reflection, trying to hold the aggro of the mobs as a huntress. I thought it was really hard to control the aggro for our class. Hunters only have decoy to redirect aggro, how is she planning to pull it off? Flawless Reflection did not understand Yi Ci's intention either. He shook his head, we'll just have to wait and see. Yi Ci crept carefully to a small hill 50 yards away from the elementals. She grabbed hold of the low hanging vines and climbed upwards. She stood at the top of the hill, knocked an arrow and took aim, silently estimating the distance between her and the elementals. They were closely packed together. Each elemental was only 2.3 yards away from the others. There was a thin line separating a safe distance and a fatal one. If the elementals were two yards apart, their aggro would be linked once triggered. But when an elemental was three yards away from another elemental, their actions wouldn't be linked. It was a very clever design. As the queen of soloing dungeons in her past life, Yi Ci required no aiming assistance. Her eyes were her most trustworthy tool. There were once a lot of buildings in Frosty Wasteland. After thousands of years of decay, some became nothing but soil, while some formed into little hills like the one that Yi Ci was on. Hordes of monsters scoured the spaces between buildings. A party that was not familiar with the terrain would easily be annihilated. Yi Ci's position was the best position she had found in her past life's experience of soloing the dungeon. She would only trigger five monsters at most from her position. If she was able to grasp the firing angle, timing and the distance perfectly, she would only trigger two monsters at a time. Yi Ci knocked an arrow and waited quietly for the elementals to move to a position that favored her the most. One minute passed, and then another. Yi Ci stood as still as a statue on the hill, as if she had blended in as part of the dungeon. The players who were waiting below were so anxious that their hearts were already in their mouths. They stared at Yi Ci, 
not wanting to take their eyes off her, fearing that things would take a 180 degree turn if they took their eyes off her. Flawless reflection stared intently at Yi Si as well. He was even very careful when he blinked, afraid that he would miss something. Without warning, Yi Si let loose the arrow and immediately headed back towards the group. Did she hit? Or had she missed? Did she trigger an entire horde of them or only a few? Flawless reaction's anxiety was at its maximum as he asked, How many are there? How do we handle them? Get the tanks to do their jobs. Yi Si did not even turn her head as she calmly gave the instruction. The tanks immediately got into position. Three elementals appeared, bearing their fangs at Yi Si's direction. Shield bash. Taunt. The tanks immediately engaged an elemental each, and the healers followed up. The elites of a top guild were very different from the others. They knew what needed to be done even without instructions from Yi Si. Their positioning was excellent, and their game awareness was good. It would be absurd for a party like this to not be successful. Yi Si then pulled the mobs in the same way, bit by bit. The horde of elementals were nothing but dead carcasses before long. After flawless reflection looted the carcasses, the warlocks immediately swarmed all over the elementals' carcasses for their elemental dust. Seventeen elementals yielded two blue equipment and a green equipment, all of them LVL 18 and above, which were perfect for the current stage of the game. Why is the drop rate in this place so high? Even the common mobs dropped blue equipments, a sorcerer player was surprised. This is the nightmare difficulty. If only a boss dropped loot, then it would be an outright fraud. Flawless reflection was satisfied with the loot. Yi Si had specifically asked to be given priority only on hunter equipment. Although it was not beneficial for Flawless Reflection as an individual, he was a commander, it did not matter to him even if his equipment was slightly out of date. The most important thing was that the performance of the party was increased. With Yi Si's help, they were able to clear all the obstacles they faced before reaching the first boss with zero casualties. It was not because of Yi Si's talent alone. The experience of a party of veterans who had spent years playing together was on an entirely different level when compared to a guild like Steel, Blooded Battle Spear that had been formed for only three to four months. The first boss is an easy one. Yi Si smiled at the first boss, Liepi that was lying on the ground asleep, Druid, transform and go and pull his aggro. The boss deals magical damage. Flawless Reflection was slightly surprised. This was the first time he came across a magical damage boss since the beginning of fate. That's right. The druid must consume the frost resistance potion when the boss began chanting his spell. The ranged players do not have to consume any potions, but it is important that you guys do not stick together. You must take note that the boss will name a player randomly. The player who is named by the boss must immediately get at least 50 yards away from the boss or you'll explode. This might lead to the annihilation of the entire party. Yi Si explained the strategy to defeat the boss briefly, this first boss is easy. All you need to do is to stand still and fire away. It's not as difficult to take care of as the monster back at the clock tower. Let's do our best and take it out in one go. This was a 25.man nightmare difficulty dungeon. But the players had this illusion that the boss was very easy to defeat because of Yi Si. The party was still annihilated once. The druid was too unlucky. Yi Si had never seen the boss cast a freeze spell immediately after the battle began. Before the druid could even get near the boss, he was frozen solid by the boss's skill and became a giant block of ice. Although Yi Si had given the order to retreat, 20.odd players still died as they were unable to react. Because of that, the druid cursed silently at the first boss. Maybe it was due to the druid's cursing, the boss was easily defeated on their second try. Despite that, there was still an incident where the druid almost died to the boss because his magic resistance was slightly lower than expected, but was able to survive after being healed by the combined efforts of the clerics in the party. Even Yi Si was slightly shaken when it happened. 
even with a slightly lower magic resistance, the druid was like a beast. He was able to control the aggro of the boss perfectly. With the help of the decoys from the hunters who were present, the aggro of the boss was firmly held by the druid. After expending a lot of mana, the party was able to defeat the first boss within 40 minutes. In the nightmare difficulty dungeon where even the common mobs yielded equipment, the loot drop from the boss was not overly abundant. The first boss merely dropped six items. Four weapons, two armor, 200 dot odd gold coins and nothing else. One of the four weapons caught Yi Si's attention. Liepi's hasty crossbow crossbow blue equipment attack speed. 0.7 attack. 112.165 strength. Plus 57 agility. Plus 62 balance. Plus 71 special attribute. Attack speed plus 1, reload speed reduced by 0.5 seconds. Special attribute. 5% chance of stealing 1% of target's hit points. Special attribute. Increases armor penetration value by 5. Required class. Ranger, Rogue, Hunter. Dot the crossbow was one of the equipment with the lowest drop rate yielded by Liapi. Yi Si had never come across this crossbow even after clearing the dungeons countless times. She had only seen a screenshot of the crossbow in the forums. Yi Si claimed the crossbow as her own without hesitation. Although flawless reflection and an apple a day were also drooling over the Liepi's hasty crossbow, they did not object to Yi Si's action due to their previous agreement. A sudden thought occurred to Yi Si after she equipped the crossbow, let's roll points and see if I can get it. 67, 81, 7, Yi Si stared expressionlessly at the points that she had rolled. She was glad about the decision about asking for priorities over hunter gears. Author's note in the bracket, so it's irrelevant. The road ahead, however, was not so smooth. World Conqueror managed to defeat the second boss after getting annihilated a few times and had finally reached the third boss. The third boss was a gigantic bird. According to the lore, it was the mistress of the dungeon that preys on adventurers who dared venture close to its lair. It was especially fierce, as it was about to lay eggs soon. The third boss has several skills. The first one is, Wing Flap. It will continuously deal wind-type damage to players in a 270-degree area. If you're unlucky, you'll be blown away. The second skill it has is, Spit. Those who are hit by its saliva will be frozen. This is why you shouldn't be stingy about consuming your potions. The tank must pull the boss around in circles. All the ranged players must be direction opposite of the tank and rotate around the boss according to the tank's position. If you don't move, you might be blown away if you're unlucky enough. Yi Si was very satisfied with the party's progress. She let out a satisfied laugh. The party members, especially the druid earlier on who had become the laughing stock of the party, laughed as well after listening to Yi Si's explanation. To all the rogues, remember to go steal the eggs. Yi Si pointed at the huge nest not far away. Chapter 68 The Dungeon, Part 2, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Whenever the boss loses 10% of its hit points, it will lay an egg. When that happens, the rogues must go and steal its eggs and then throw them off the cliff behind the nest. Remember, don't let her see you, or she'll become enraged. Despite sounding simple, it was nightmare difficulty. Even when one know of the strategy, it was still hard to pull it off. The first time the party got annihilated, it was fault of the main healer. He was so focused on healing the tank that he was two seconds too slow to reposition. Misfortune struck, and he was blown away to a far far away place. The second party annihilation came when the party's tank died. The entire party with the exception of three hunters and a rogue were blown away. As for the third time, the rogues were discovered when they tried to steal the eggs. If Yi Si had not realized it early and activated feigned death, she would have died along with the rest of the party. The fourth time. The fifth time. The tenth time. 
Once again, the party was annihilated. Yi Ci asked around for the lowest death count, and then remained silent. The players from World Conqueror still had high morale. Even if it was nightmare difficulty, even if they were still on the pioneering stages of this dungeon, they did not keep quiet. The party members interacted with each other actively, discussing and sharing information. Flawless reflection glanced at Yi Ci, do we start again? Yi Ci stared silently at the party members. A commander is merely someone who lowers the mistakes made by his or her party members. But to totally avoid mistakes, it was up to the members themselves. An obedient party member was the best party member, but a blindly obedient party member was the worst. Those who were not willing to think were the reason why a party was repeatedly annihilated. They had died for the twelfth time in the hands of the third boss. Yi Ci stood up and said, This is the last time. I hope that we can clear this dungeon in one go. Although they'd only known Yi Ci for a few hours, the members of the party seemed to have already figured out her speech patterns and their hidden meanings. They knew that when Yi Ci said, in one go, it meant that it was not a simple statement, it was a must. With that, the party members were pressured. But at times, the pressure was just what people needed as a driving force. When pressured, people tend to have extraordinary performance. The battle began. Dragon Witch raised his shield and braced himself, standing right in front of the boss. Shield bash, taunt, stunning blow were released on the boss, building up its aggro. Shift 30 degrees to your 4 o'clock direction. Shouted Yi Ci after observing the boss's spell channeling. Dragon Witch was already moving, and the boss moved with him. The ranged players repositioned themselves as well. At the next moment, the spot that they move away from was covered with ice. The boss suddenly flew up, ignoring the players as it flew towards its nest. A rogue immediately entered stealth and crept towards the nest. The boss flew back towards the crowd after laying its egg. Dragon Witch immediately pulled the boss's aggro back from the clerics with a shield bash. The rogue immediately climbed into the nest and grabbed the egg. He then ran as fast as he could towards the cliff. The egg was heavy, reducing his movement speed by 50%. He rushed towards the cliff and dumped the egg just as the boss turned its back towards him. The timing was very hard to grasp. They have only figured it out after the sacrifice of several rogues. When the boss had only 20% of its hit points left, a sorcerer moved too slowly and was frozen. He consumed a freeze resistance potion but was then blown away by the boss's wing flap. The other ranged players began to feel anxiety, and their resolve faltered. Yi Ci immediately spoke up, keep it up, don't lose heart, it's just one person, before she could finish speaking, a cleric and a druid were also blown away. The party members became even more distressed. Yi Ci creased her eyebrows, I want the rest of you to keep attacking. Just make sure that you don't die. Do your part. Be more professional. Yi Ci's voice was not loud, but it was filled with authority. She managed to calm the faltering party though. Although the damage output of the party was slightly reduced, the members were still doing their best to fulfill their task. The boss began to move faster and faster, killing more and more of the party members and blowing some of them away. The ones who remained, however, carried on Yi Si's order. As long as you live, fight on. By the time the boss had 5% of its hit points left, the only ones remaining in the party were a rogue, the MT Dragon Witch, the main cleric, and Yi Si. To take pressure off of the cleric from having to continuously heal the MT up, the rogue hid behind the boss and landed skill after skill on the boss. He asked, Commander, what will happen if I OT now? If you manage to OT, the chances of us defeating this boss will be higher. The rogue nodded, chugged down a bottle of rage potion, and began to attack the boss as if there was no tomorrow. His aggro values began to rise rapidly. 344759718897. It was going to overtake the aggro of the MT. Yi Ci immediately gave out an instruction, I want the MT and healer to switch positions by my command. 
The rogue's aggro value was still climbing. 10310711426. OT. Now. Yi Ci shouted out when the rogue's aggro was at 114, and the MT and the main healer immediately moved to each other's location. The boss chomped down on the rogue, killing him instantly. His sacrifice bought the party another 20 seconds. The main healer died when the boss's hit points was at 3%. Dragon Witch took in a deep breath and chugged a health potion. He died after holding on for 6 more seconds. At that moment, all eyes were on Yi Ci. The entire party's hope lay on Yi Ci's shoulders. She took in a deep breath and summoned OL3 while leaping 25 yards away from the boss. OL3 could stand at ground against the boss for approximately 15 seconds. But the 15 seconds was enough. The boss had a ranged attack just like Yi Ci, which was very unfavorable for her. Despite the odds, Yi Ci knew that she had to fight on. Yi Ci expended all her skills within 8.5 seconds, which meant she had 6.5 seconds left before OL3 was killed by the boss. A few lucky critical hits reduced the boss's hit points to 1%. But the boss's attention had shifted towards Yi Ci. It ignored OL3 and flew straight at Yi Ci. Yi Ci immediately darted at the cliff wall that the bird's nest was leaning against, and leapt into the air. She used the cliff wall as a springboard and launched herself at the boss. Yi Ci brushed past the boss at high speed. She drew her venomous scorpion stinger and stabbed the boss wing. Poisoned. OL3 finally caught up with the boss and reacquired its aggro with taunt. For seconds remaining, and the boss had only 0.8% of its hit points left. Yi Ci cast a pet heal on OL3 and launched herself 25 yards away from the boss while firing at the boss non-stop. She had already equipped Liapi's hasty crossbow. Although having a high firing speed, the crossbow lacked crowd control as it does not slow down its target upon hitting it. The boss let out a mighty cry and chomped down on OL3. The strike was fast and ferocious, and OL3 was instantly killed. Yi Ci was slightly shocked. The situation had taken a bad turn. She ran as fast as she could, keeping a 25 yards distance between the boss and herself while continuously casting skill after skill at the boss. With each passing moment, Yi Ci's stamina dropped. If her stamina dropped below 10%, her movement speed would be reduced. She had only 12% of her stamina left. Yi Ci analyzed the situation calmly. As long as she avoided making mistakes, she would be able to defeat the boss. Although Yi Ci was calm, the party members who were lying dead on the ground were extremely anxious. They did not even dare to breath. It was as if they have died along with their in-dot game characters. The boss let out a roar and flapped its wings frantically when it had only 0.5% of its hit points left. Empowered Wing Flap Even Yi Ci couldn't resist the urge to curse under her breath. She was lifted up by the strong gust and was blown towards a cliff wall. Yi Ci raised her crossbow and fired her last skill at the boss before her death. Bang! She was slammed into the cliff wall, and her hit points plunged. She had only 100 plus hit points left. The entire party sighed. It was over. As Yi Si's body fell, her hit points bar was suddenly filled. She was shocked and a tremendous amount of experience points flooded her experience gauge, raising her level to LVL 20 with 89% progress. Plop. Before Yi Si could recover, she fell into the boss's nest. The thick interior of the nest cushioned her fall, but she still lost half her hit points. A system announcement immediately chimed in. Congratulations, World Conqueror, for being the first guild to clear the nightmare difficulty Frosty Wasteland. Rewards 800 guild prestige points, 10,000 global city prestige points, 5,000 gold coins. Let us remember the name of these heroes.
Congratulations Gomzi Yu for leading the party of World Conqueror to be the first to clear Frosty Wasteland Nightmare difficulty. Rewards 300 Black Rock City Prestige Points, 5 Talent Points Achievement Nightmare Frosty Wasteland First 5 Her name shall forever be remembered in the history of fate. Congratulations Flawless Reflection for achieving first blood on Frosty Wasteland Nightmare difficulty. Rewards 300 Black Rock City Prestige Points, 5 Talent Points Achievement Nightmare Frosty Wasteland First 5 His name shall forever be remembered in the history of fate. Congratulations Dragon Witch for achieving first blood on Frosty Wasteland Nightmare difficulty. Rewards 300 Black Rock City Prestige Points, 5 Talent Points Achievement Nightmare Frosty Wasteland First 5 His name shall forever be remembered in the history of fate. The world channel was flooded by the system's messages. At this moment, the world chat belonged to only one guild. World Conqueror At this moment, the attention of the world was focused on one player. Gong Ziyu Chapter 69 Good Things Come in Pairs You are listening at NovelFull.audio A note from Jay I'm getting real sick of negative crap getting posted in the comments. If you want to be negative, go elsewhere. We translate and edit because we love the series, so stop treating our releases as a right. The next negative comments I see are going to be reported and probably banned. We don't need it here, nor am I going to continue to tolerate anyone insulting Jimmy. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything. It was finally over. Ye CI felt nothing but exhaustion. When Ye CI thought about it, the reason her near dot empty health bar was filled was probably thanks to the lifesteal effect on Yippie's hasty crossbow. She had to admit that she had gained a lot from this dungeon. The crossbow alone was worth the trip. It was a shame that she had socketed the tetra plating onto her icy short bow. She could at least still keep it around in case somebody she knew played as a hunter. In contrast with Yi Si, the corpses of World Conqueror filled the party channel with with cries of joy as soon as their guild achieved first blood. They revived themselves and rushed towards Yi Si who was climbing out of the nest. They surrounded her and showered her with applause. Despite being someone who had reincarnated, Yi Si was also infected by the party's joy. She broke out in laughter along with them. Dragon Witch was the one who looted the corpse, and Disrupting Shot was of course among the loot along with a few blue equipment. Although none of them were suitable for Yi Si, she was content with just the skill book. Flawless Reflection stared silently at Yi Si, his eyes filled with suspicion. He then sent her a private message, Gongzi, we're still in the pioneering stage of this dungeon, but how do you know of the strategy to clear this it? Were you part of the closed beta test? Or? He continued with a pause, or, are you a Glory Corporation employee? Yi Si pursed her lips. As expected, the question was asked. This was why she was unwilling to help others to clear dungeons. Not only were her personal benefits affected, she would eventually expose the fact that she had prior knowledge of the game. She knew that her actions would arouse the suspicions of people like Flawless Reflection. Who said that reincarnated people would definitely be able to live their lives effortlessly? They had their own hardships to face. For example, hiding the fact that they've been reincarnated. But Yi Si had already thought of an answer to such questions. She looked at Flawless Reflection and answered with a half-truth, I've watched videos of the Fate closed beta. Was there really a closed beta test for Fate? Only God knew. But Yi Si who was reincarnated knew for a fact that there was indeed a closed beta test for Fate. The famous players during the later stages of the game were beta testers. They'd signed a contract to keep it a secret, and once they breached the contract, they would need to pay a large amount of fees. Despite that, there was a rumor circulating among players. It was said that there was an ultra.secretive website hosting footage of Fate's closed beta. 
However, not many could find their way to the website. Even Yi CI didn't know if it really existed, but most players believed in its existence anyways. Flawless Reflection was one of those who believed. When he heard Yi C's words, he assumed that she was a beta tester. He was smart enough not to ask any further. He knew that he would get nothing more from Yi CI. He nodded, satisfied with her answer to his suspicions. It was already really late when the group left the dungeon. The party members were so hyped that they decided to go have fun at the largest tavern in Black Rock City instead of going offline. But at that time, Yi Ci who was already very tired and hungry had to decline. Knowing that she was indeed exhausted, the group did not make things difficult for her. After all, they were all deeply impressed by her. A lot of them even sent her friend requests. After receiving 30,000 gold coins from Flawless Reflection, Yi Ci immediately went offline for dinner. The night's meal was very satisfying. After learning that Yi Ci had led World Conqueror into achieving a first blood, Bai Mo was overjoyed, as if he himself had gotten the first blood as well. He immediately went offline and waited for Yi Ci in her room. As soon as she climbed out of her gaming cabin, he dragged her to the nearest restaurant and treated her to a meal. After the dishes were served, Bai Mo kept placing food into Yi C's plate, piling up a miniature mountain. Yi Ci could not possibly finish them all, and she immediately objected to Bai Mo's action. He merely cast a silly grin at Yi Ci and said, Sis, the next time you're on an adventure, bring me along yo. See how good I'm treating you, he even winked at Yi Ci. Can't you just say it properly? Yi Ci rolled her eyes, exposing Bai Mo's pretentious act. The two began bickering while having their meal. Whoosh! A loud crashing sound resounded in Steel, Blooded Battle Axe's conference room. Dot the European dot style conference table in the middle of the room was split in half by Thousand Sunset Sword. Splinters showered everybody who was in the room. Peacock Blue screamed out in fear and hid behind Zero Arsenic. The rest of the guild members present were grey dot faced. They remained silent, not daring to speak up. Thousand Sunsets was panting while he paced back and forth angrily. He then swung his sword with fury again, slashing and hacking at the other furniture in the conference room. Even the chairs that were not occupied was kicked away by Thousand Sunsets. Zero Arsenic immediately stood up and shouted at the other guild officers, What are you guys still waiting for? Stop him. The guild officers sprang into action. They jumped at Thousand Sunsets and managed to hold him down after much struggling. Thousand Sunsets panted like a bull, and finally calmed down after a long moment. He then said in a hoarse voice, Let go of me. The guild's officers held on to dear life, fearing that Thousand Sunsets would resume his rage. They then looked at Zero Arsenic. What? Am I not your guild leader? You don't have to listen to me anymore. Thousand Sunset's anger began to resurface. Zero Arsenic signaled the officers. They immediately let go of Thousand Sunsets, and immediately backed off into a corner of the conference room to avoid being the cannon fodder in the face of Thousand Sunset's anger. Thousand. Even Zero Arsenic had no idea how to calm him down. Thousand Sunsets rose and straightened out his clothes. He then cut Zero Arsenic off and roared at Little Dan and Crimson Millions who had their heads lowered this whole while, this is all your fault. I wanted to appoint her as the battle commander because she's capable. You guys are jealous that she contributed more to the guild than both of you and objected to the idea. You objected. Now see what happened. Tell me. Little Dan and Crimson Millions could not muster the courage to even speak up to defend themselves, and it made Thousand Sunsets even angrier, you think you're so great, hogging the commander's position. Especially you, little Dan. I told you to let her be the commander and what did you tell me? See what happened. We haven't even gotten past the first boss and she had already cleared the nightmare difficulty for World Conqueror. Little Dan lowered his head even more. As if his tongue lashing was not enough, 
thousand sunsets walked up to the two and grabbed little Dan by his collar and said with a face full of sarcasm, Gongzi Yu was still one of us yesterday, and today she helped somebody else get first blood. On the nightmare difficulty, no less. I thought you said that she's useless. Isn't she inexperienced? Didn't you say she's heartless and selfish? Are you trying to make me look stupid? Little Dan felt hurt after being on the receiving end of Thousand Sunset's wrath for such a long period. He gulped and mumbled, we didn't say anything, it was your idea. What did you say? What did you say? It's my fault now. I trusted you guys. You were like my brothers. I removed her from the battle commander's position because you asked me to. I did not place her in command at your request. So now that's an issue for you. Thousand sunsets roared, unable to restrain his anger. Not a single living soul dared to speak up. Even when Thousand Sunsets was obviously shirking his responsibility in the matter, no one was willing to risk triggering his anger. The person in charge of human resources entered the conference room a few moments later and delivered a report saying that a lot of members had left the guild after Gongzi Yu left. The level 3 guild that they tried so hard to achieve would be downgraded if the situation continued. The report was like adding oil to an already raging flame. It was one disaster on top of another. Thousand Sunset's eyes reddened. He glared at the human resource officer and suddenly roared, Out! Get the F asterisk CK out. The human resource officer who was simply collateral damage in the face of Thousand Sunset's anger immediately retreated out of the conference room. Thousand Sunset's then pointed at the rest of the guild officers, Out! All of you! Out! Get the F asterisk CK out, the officers immediately rushed to the entrance as if they'd been granted amnesty. Before they could leave, Thousand Sunset's voice rang out again, Little Dan, Crimson, I don't care how you do it, but I want the frosty wasteland cleared by the end of this week. The two mumbled their answers and left. Zero Arsenic was the only one left other than Thousand Sunsets. He sighed, Thousand, forget about it, this. Thousand Sunsets raised his hand, Zero, I need time to calm down alone. Zero Arsenic nodded and left the room. He left the conference room that had become a mess, with Thousand Sunsets in it. Thousand Sunsets leaned on his chair with a distant stare on his face, and a sinister coldness slowly crept into his eyes. When Yi Si woke up after a good night's sleep, it was already time for lunch. Bayamo was already logged into the game, so Yi Si could only prepare a small meal for herself and then logged into the game as well. The moment she was online, she noticed that the guild was suddenly bustling with activity. There were quite a lot of members in the guild. Lu Chang, the little hands couple, Timely Rain, Pickled Pepper Phoenix Claw, Let Go of That Girl, Ideal Height 1.7M, Clear Moon. She saw a lot of familiar and unfamiliar names. They greeted her immediately after noticing that she was online. Yi Si was surprised and curious at the same time, why are you guys here? As far as she knew, most of them did not like the idea of joining a guild. Chapter 70 Moro Canyon You are listening at NovelFull.audio All of them gave answers of their own, but all of them were directed at remote depths. Yi Si found it odd, and she immediately sought out remote depths for an answer, how did you find them? You actually know them. Remote depths chuckled, you're wise as a rule, but this time a fool. How would I know any of your friends other than Lu Chang? Yi Si found it even more odd, if he did not know them, how did they join the guild? Did they request to join our guild? Of course not. Remote depths chuckled, it was quite simple actually. I sent a message to the world channel, looking for those who are in Gongzi Yu's friend list to add me as a friend. And then they added you. Ah, quite a lot of players added me, but not many of them actually know you. I asked them a few questions, and I was able to confirm if they really knew you. Remote Depths rubbed his hands, Sis, your relations with people are so wide, you even know let go of that girl who is the number one of the leveling ranking list. Yi Si was dumbfounded. 
with her ways of doing things, she would never even consider trying what Remote Depths did in her entire life. She looked at Remote Depths and let out a long sigh, are you not afraid of trouble? Remote Depths smiled at Yi Si's words. He patted her hair out of habit and said, why are you always worrying? Little C.I., this game is your stage to shine. Don't think too much. Be happy. Play the game. Make some noise. Don't think too much about it. It's not that I'm not happy, it's just that. Yi C.I. could not describe her feelings with words, but she felt that what Bai M.O. did was not exactly right. Remote depths shook his head, problems exist to be solved. Why are you worrying about them? I'll be there for you, not matter what happens, dot Yi C.I. stared at remote depths, and broke into laughter. Yes, this was the Bai M.O. she knew, this was the remote depths she knew. Sociable, knowledgeable, and overly optimistic. He was the direct opposite of Yi C.I. There was confidence in his heart, and there was nothing that he couldn't do. To be with such person, even the world would appear brighter. I'll go farm some monsters. Let go, please show us the best leveling spot, we'll form a party and head there. Baimo grinned, and his jolly mood was infectious. With the exception of Yi C.I., the entire guild, although only around ten players, went out to the leveling spot. Yi C.I. objected to their action of discriminating against her, but was met with disdain. The group then headed for a LVL-18 leveling area, leaving Yi C.I. behind in an empty guild encampment, or to call it in a glorified way, to watch the fort. Yi C.I. glanced at all the player classes in the guild and suddenly thought of a person. She pulled up her friend list and the person was online. She then sent them a message. You there. Yi C.'s counterpart immediately replied, yeah. Do you have a guild now? Fruit Jelly was saddened after hearing the question. At the earlier stages of the game, she was unable to learn novice healing as her level was too low. That was why parties rejected her and in dejection, she decided to level up on her own. She was already LVL 18, but she hadn't learned any basic healing skills. She had totally given up on joining any guilds. Nope. Ha. Huh. Yi C.I. was astonished at the answer she received. Fruit Jelly was an excellent cleric. The players who partied with her would definitely be impressed. Especially with her revival, how could she not have a guild? Fruit Jelly was also dumbfounded by Yi C.'s astonishment. She sighed, nobody wanted to party with me earlier on, so I have always been alone, and I got used to it. You. Don't tell me you've never entered a dungeon before. Yeah. Yi C.I. sobbed internally. The life of Fruit Jelly before she became an expert was tough. Do you want to join our guild? They're partying up and are headed for the leveling zone. Yi C.I. immediately sent her a guild invitation. Fruit Jelly didn't even think as she accepted the invitation. There was no other reason. Gongzi Yu was the one who gave her the revival skill book. Besides, she knew that it was almost impossible to go solo in fate. It was a pity that she was always a quiet person, and she was too shy to join a guild on her own accord. How could she reject an invitation from Gongzi Yu? After inviting Fruit Jelly into the guild, Yi C.I. immediately instructed Remote Depths to help direct her to his location. Fruit Jelly immediately shook her head, it's alright, I'll go look for them myself. This was the first game that Fruit Jelly had ever played, and it was her first time partying up with others in her four months of gaming. She was very nervous. Remote Depths laughed, nah it's okay, we're family after all. Stay put, I'll go get you. Once Fruit Jelly was in the party, Yi C.I. sent Remote Depths a private message and explained Fruit Jelly's situation to him, and told him to watch her skills in healing carefully. Remote Depths, of course, agreed to it. As Yi C.I. was going to continue doing her daily quest in Red Lake City, a system notification suddenly chimed. There is a strange change to your equipment, please take note. Yi C.I. immediately thought of the mysterious ring on her finger, 
and immediately pulled out the ring stats. Mysterious ring gray equipment strength plus two required level. Zero able to grow it was no different from before, but there was a small row of hints underneath the stats. There seems to be some strange changes happening to this ordinary ring. Perhaps the dwarven scholar La Pito at Moro Canyon knows what is going on. Yi Si had been wearing the ring ever since she'd gotten it from the mysterious dungeon. She had thought of looking for hints about the ring in the game, but she had never been able to come across one until the system notification rang out. This got Yi Si excited. According to the NPC called Frodo, the ring was related to the Dark Lord Naga, and it seemed that it could unlock Naga's treasure trove. Even if it might not be real, the sheer possibility of it was alluring enough. Without thinking too much about it, Yi Si completed her daily quests with haste and immediately headed for the Moro Canyon. Before she left, she instructed remote depths to lead the guild members who do not have good enough equipment into the dungeon to loot some equipment. The Moro Canyon was situated at the northernmost part of the eastern continent. It would take Yi Si five hole in dot game days to reach the canyon from Red Lake City. Not only that, the road to Moro Canyon was filled with LVL 40 to LVL 60 leveling zones. Yi Si had to be very careful as she passed through the area. Even though Yi Si wanted to reach her destination as soon as possible, her safety was still her top priority. She cast feigned death multiple times along the way to avoid death. By the time she reached Moro Canyon, it took her seven in dot game days. Although the leveling ranking did not experience many changes during the seven in dot game days, their leveling experience progress was raised by a lot. Although Yi Si felt that it was very embarrassing for her to be quite behind in terms of leveling as someone who had reincarnated, she made the decision to place priority on the ring. The Moro Canyon was a very picturesque place. It was covered by lush green plants that bore countless unknown wild fruits. Sunshine shone on the entire map, blanketing the place in a brilliant gold. But, if one assumed that the place was safe just because of the scenery, then he or she was horribly wrong. It was said that a master rogue resided in the canyon. The place was littered with traps and mines, along with monsters that were LVL-65 to LVL-75. There was also a high concentration of elite monsters and even field bosses. The map was a very dangerous place. The only reason Yi Si had dared to set foot in this place was because of her feigned death skill. She wouldn't dare to venture into that map otherwise. She had even maxed out her advanced concealment and empowered stealth trait in the survival category to increase her level of security and movement speed when she activated stealth. She could walk safely past a monster with the same level or five levels higher than her within a five yards distance. If the monster was more than five levels higher than her, then the safety distance would be increased to ten yards. If a monster was ten levels higher than her, she would need to be at least fifteen yards away from the monster to avoid detection. This meant that with Yi C's level, she would be detected by monsters as soon as she was within a 15 yards range of a monster even during stealth. Fortunately for Yi Si, she knew the approximate location of La Pito, and she was able to reach the deepest part of the Moro Canyon safely after avoiding countless monsters. It was a completely different world. The deepest part of Moro Canyon was a direct contrast to its outer part. The ground was covered by red soil, and the scent of machine oil filled the air. Yi Si was impressed by herself. She was able to remember the place that she had stumbled upon while avoiding several large guilds' manhunts. She sniffed the air and walked deeper into the canyon. The smell of machine oil was becoming stronger and stronger. A small cave then appeared in Yi Si's view, 